What's up guys? My name is Greg Peters. You're watching the Car Passion channel and today I am going to be putting these things in here. After making sure that the rod and the back of the bearing are completely spotless, they get installed just the same way that we uh, put the bearings in the block. And same with the cap here. And no, no lube behind the bearings on these. Just wanna go ahead and put those in dry. So this is now ready to be dropped into the cylinder, but there are uh, a couple more things I'm gonna do first. Number one, um, I am going to lube up the cylinder walls completely with just uh, regular motor oil as well as the pistons you can probably see it's a little shiny because i already did it i'm going to check all of my ring gaps against the diagram that i have from SuperTech to make sure that all the ring gaps are perfect right before it drops into the cylinder and you also have to make sure this is this is super super important you have to make sure this edge of the rod here is not coming into contact with the cylinder walls or the uh, the part of the crankshaft that the, the, the bearing sits on because it's super easy to damage that stuff. So a stock rod typically would have studs coming out of it which you would put some fat vacuum line onto to protect it from everything. I don't have that so I, I have these little bubble wrap baggies that I'm gonna put over the bottom of the rod before I drop it in. Now I'll just drop that into the cylinder and I'm ready for the ring compressor. So I even put a little bit of oil on the inside of the ring compressor. Can't be too cautious, right? I tighten it up all the way and this is gonna compress the rings all the way down and hopefully it will slide seamlessly into the cylinder. Now that I've got the ring compressor on, you can see there's a little bit of the piston hanging out of the bottom. I'm gonna use that to carefully drop it into the bore. You have to make sure the compressor is completely flush with the block, and when you're hitting the piston in, you kinda wanna push down on the compressor to make sure it stays flush. If one of the rings pops in between the compressor and the block, and you hit it wrong, it can break the ring, and you basically need to buy a new set of rings. You can't just buy one ring, so you're gonna be out 100 bucks if you make a mistake doing this. And um, this will be the uh, this will be the second time I've ever done this, so I'm a little bit nervous, but we're gonna see how it goes. Holding the compressor firmly downwards towards the block, I am going to attempt to smack the piston into the bore. Pray for me fam. All right, here we go. Oh my god, it worked! We're in business, boys! Now I can flip, flip this mad boy over. Once it's out of the bore, it's pretty much safe, so you can take off whatever protection you have on the uh, end of the rod. You still have to be extremely careful here to hold the rod straight and basically push on the piston until the rod meets the crank. Nice and slow. Just like that. I'll just drop my cap on again being very careful make sure you put that on the right way and drop in the ARP bolts which of course have already got ARP assembly lube on them now for my specific application these ARPs need to be torqued down to 60 foot-pounds and what I'm gonna do first is go back and forth just to just to snug these down until the rod cap is flush with the rod, and now I'll torque them in sequence to 20, 40, and finally 60. Now guys, I, I can't stress enough that there's nothing in particular that's really difficult about building an engine. I know it seems like, to some people it probably seems like, you know, it's a crazy, crazy thing that they could never do, but it's all about just breaking it down into steps. You know, when, when I'm researching, I'm not looking up 
how to build an engine. I'm looking up how to install piston rings and I'll look up five different ways to install piston rings and then try to make sense of it all and, and come up with my own way to do it, you know, using all the information that I've found. And it's all about just taking your time, go step by step and ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And before you know it, you're building an engine and you're having a good time doing it. So there's not really too much more technical detail I can give you on this section of the build. So why don't you enjoy these crisp shots and see beats. Okay, so I uh, I broke a ring on number two. There's a there's a piece of it. So I'm, I'm kind of bummed about that. How could I have prevented that? Having a better ring compressor. The one I have is kind of cheap. I should have I should have hammered the sleeve down a little bit better on the block. Maybe. Um, like I said, I've only I've only done this once before, so it's a mistake on my part, an expensive one. So I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep now. So I'll see you later. Two weeks later. I've regrouped, I've ended my frustration. Actually it was, I did it right before I was leaving for vacation, so I didn't even touch the motor after I did that. But um, let me show you guys here. I pulled all the pistons back out of the engine to inspect every single ring. Uh, even though some of them went in smoothly, I still want to check them out because I, I feared that I damaged other ones, but it was actually just this one right here. There's the little bugger. Just a little, little tiny chip off the end of that ring right there. And I bought a set for all four cylinders because I didn't know if there was gonna be more damage and I figured it, it wouldn't hurt to have spares. So I bought a set of rings, uh, but the rings do not come filed. So I also got, it's like when you get a Christmas gag gift and they wrap it in 18 different boxes so you can't open it. I just need to open this. Oh, it's a build-it-yourself, apparently, ring filer. So I can file as many piston rings as I need. The little wheel that sits in there, and you, you file your own ring with it. So I got that. And to hopefully avoid this happening again, I got myself a Trick Wiseco 84 millimeter specific ring compressor. That is just that is just art right there. From what I've read and from what people have told me, these ring compressors work way better. Don't buy these, they're worthless, they suck, and I think I'm gonna throw this out into Riser Alley and watch it get run over by an automatic cord. So the benefit to this fixed diameter ring compressor is when you put the piston in it, it's only touching the rings. So the piston slides through it very easily in comparison to the uh, adjustable ring compressor. I'm gonna hold it against the block so there's no gap. I'm just gonna lightly tap this with the rubber end of this mallet till it's just out of the block. And one, two, three. Wow. Wow! Why didn't I do that the first time? Car Passion Channel, public service announcement. Do not assemble a motor without one of these. All right guys, so now I'm gonna get back to assembling this thing, getting all four pistons in, and getting on to the next video. So I wanna thank you for being so patient for these videos. My my jobs, uh, my regular jobs have been very, very busy, and I've had almost no time at all to dedicate to videos, which I hate, because I know so many of you are stoked on these things when they drop, but, I'm really trying to hammer it out. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna be starting to film the clutch replacement on Broken Boosted. I'm gonna get that out as quick as I can, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.